What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here, and today we're talking about why every photographer should be using Lightroom. We're gonna go through some tips and tricks and techniques so that by the end of this video, hopefully you'll be just a straight savage with that camera using Lightroom. All right, roll that intro. Woo! All right, everybody, welcome back to another Peter McKinnon tutorial. So great to see all your smiling faces, which actually can't see any of them, but I assume some of you are smiling and some of you probably aren't smiling and let's just continue with the tutorial. Happy Father's Day for starters to all the dads and fathers out there, all the fathers to be, all the fathers come and gone and, and all of that. Being a father myself, I respect the job, the title, the uh, yeah, happy Father's Day. Whatever. Hope you guys have a great day with your family and uh, maybe grab your kids and watch this tutorial and smash the like button and that'll be my Father's Day gift. I don't know, whatever, it's super lame. I've done a lot of tutorials in Photoshop and in Premiere and just random stuff and techniques and thoughts and stuff like that, but I've never done a tutorial with Lightroom before and I thought it was time that we did that. It's an incredibly powerful tool and to be honest, like the more and more time that goes by, the more I find myself using it and the more I discover about it and the more shortcuts I discover about it and the more I start to like it, and I just thought to myself, you know, my audience needs to know, A, how much I like this, and B, I want them to like it just as much. So I'm gonna run through a couple things. It's not gonna be a long one today. I'm gonna go as fast as I can, and by that I mean it'll probably still be 15 minutes, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best so that you guys can all get back to your families. But before we jump into this tutorial, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode, and they are, of course, as you all know, the all-in-one platform website where you can go to get a store, a blog, Blog, a website, an online presence. They make the whole thing easy. It's an all-in-one platform, so it's all done for you. There's never anything to upgrade or install or patch. They've got award-winning, beautiful designer templates, award-winning customer service, 24-7. They make domains easy. These guys have the web game on lock. If you want to save some money, head over to squarespace.com slash McKinnon, enter code whoosh, McKinnon in checkout, and that'll save you 10% off your first purchase. I'm getting better and better at that. Woo! Mm. Okay, so this tutorial, like I said, is about Lightroom. So if you don't have Lightroom, you want to pick that up because it is awesome. I use Lightroom CC, which is Creative Cloud. So I just pay for a subscription and I get access to all the Adobe apps for a monthly fee. I highly recommend doing that. They've got plans for all different types of people, be it that it's a business, you're a student, it's just a creative thing. Maybe you just want to use one app, whatever. That's just like, that's their whole service now. So they've got you covered. So head over there and check that out. I highly recommend you guys invest in that. If this is something that you are taking seriously or want to take to the next level, I just feel like I'm full of sounds today. I'm feeling it. Ah. Anyway, so we're going to go over just a few tips and tricks that I think will blow your mind or help your workflow or speed up your workflow. And I'm really, really excited to show you. Now, the one question I do get asked a lot is, well, what's the difference between Photoshop and Lightroom? Both of them do a lot of the same things. Both of them do completely different things. Lightroom handles like the organization and storage of files as well as the editing where Photoshop doesn't. So you can catalog and store and really, really organize your entire photo library within Lightroom at the same time as editing those photos and stuff like that. And the nice thing about Lightroom is you can always go back to those photos and since they're stored raw, you can continue to edit them and there's no save button. You don't have to hit save as and save as new version. You just go back and reset it or keep updating it. That's the beauty of Lightroom. Whereas Photoshop, you gotta save versions, but there's a little more freedom for manipulation in there. Like if you wanna take this guy's face and put it on this guy's face and put this guy on the moon and then put the moon in this guy's garage and like, that sounds crazy, but you could do that if you wanted to. And then last thing I'm gonna teach, why do I keep doing this? I'm bugging myself. And then lastly, I'm gonna teach you guys the best way that I crop my photos for Instagram, for posting to Instagram and getting the best quality Instagram shots from Lightroom to my phone so that I can upload them. And they look the best and the most beast-like and just tasty, delicious, awesome, full screen res, just mouth-watering decadence. <laughs> I'm getting carried away. All right, let's jump into Lightroom. So once you've imported your photos, they come into this section. Well, actually they come into this section called library and they're all numbered and you can kind of go through the thumbnails and star them if you want. So if you like this one, you could hit five and that's gonna remind you to come back to it. If you like this one a little bit less, you could hit three. So when you're ready to get editing, click on the develop tab and that's gonna bring you to uh, basically the editor. All of your organizational stuff is on this left side here under collections and history. So if you're gonna use Lightroom as some sort of archival storage and organization system, as well as your editor, 
that's where all that stuff would go, as well as your presets, which by the way, I am coming out with a bunch of Lightroom presets for you guys, so stay tuned for that. I'm just working on them, and they're taking a while because I want them to be awesome, and there's a lot. We are here, this is the editor. Everything down the right side here is the stuff we're gonna be talking about today. All of your tools and brushes and adjustments and sliders, everything that you're gonna use to manipulate a photo is here on the right. Okay, so to start off, I mean, we can choose anything, right? Like, let's just choose this, for example. One of the first things I do is either white balance exposure and correction of my horizons. So to get the right white balance, you just click this little eyedropper and usually you can pick like the whitest area of the photo and it'll white balance to that. So now we might wanna just drop the highlights a little bit to preserve that sky, lift the shadows slightly to give some more detail lift up those whites. And this is really kind of personal preference at this point. You can use clarity, and what clarity does is it really sharpens it up, but you don't wanna use it too much because it kind of sucks the color away and then just starts looking really, really bad. So everything in moderation. Mind you, I am uh, the sort of landscape photographer that goes for lots of color and punch. I like really dramatic photos. So for me, um, I usually go a little bit further than I would if it was like a portrait, for example. And uh, these are your base, that's your basic panel. So you guys can play with that, it's pretty straightforward. What I wanna talk about is the uh, hue, saturation, and luminance tab, which is down here, HSL. So this is like, think of it as all the individual colors that are in your photo, you have control over each and every one of them. So if I want this water to be more teal, let's take a look at this, for example. I could go down here to where it says aqua and blue because those are the colors I wanna manipulate and I can change the color. If I don't want it as aqua, I can drag these to the right and it's gonna make it more purple. But maybe I want to accentuate that aqua so I'm gonna bring them back down to the left and really make them look aqua. But that's a little too far. So it's finding the right balance with your HSL sliders to get the most out of the photo that you've taken. Now, a good way to do that is to click this little target and that opens up a selection on your on your cursor which you can click and drag one way or the other way and what that does is takes the colors in the exact target area that you clicked on and just manipulates those when you're dragging your mouse right or left so that's a really good way of doing that so down here in the grass where it's green I could click on that and it's now going to move the green and the yellow slider. It's not gonna affect the purple or the pink in the sky. So that's the HSL slider. So if we want a little more warmth, if we want that aqua to be a little more aqua to make it feel like it's a tropical place, we can drop that down. If we don't want the sky to be as blue, we can get rid of that as well by going over to luminance. So we can take the brightness of those colors and affect those. So for instance, here's blue. If we want that blue to be brighter, we obviously drag it up. If we want it to be darker, we drag it down. So we're affecting the brightness of those colors. The color themselves, we can strip or add more of. So in this instance, again, we can come over to aqua and we can make the saturation of that aqua higher by dragging saturation. And then we can drag the luminance of that aqua higher if we wanted. And then we can change the hue of that aqua if we wanted. So coming over here and playing with the HSL tabs, hue, saturation, and luminance is a great way to really get the most out of your photos. We come over here to uh, my friend Maddie. So I could bring down the exposure to make it a little more even, but now the photo's a little bit dark. So here's the next tip. Come over here to the masking brush. And this masking brush lets you paint on different settings, essentially. So let's say we wanted the exposure to be higher. Notice that we're dragging this tab right now and nothing's happening. But now if we paint, we've just painted exposure onto the subject and now that that area is selected based off this little target dot that you see here, we can continue to change that so we can make it super bright and you can see where I painted or you can bring it down darker so you can really affect just one area. If I wanna bring him up a little bit, make him sharper using clarity or using the sharpness or changing just his color to make him a little more red or make him a little more blue, we can do that by using this brush tool to paint in different areas, to bring up the darkness in someone's eyes, to bring out the white in someone's smile, to paint a more exaggerated, dramatic sunset. Now that we've just done this, we can come over here to new and it's gonna reset our brush. So let's say I want the exposure now to be darker, contrast to be higher, blacks to be down, whites to be up, shadows to be a bit more deep. Now when I paint, it's gonna put exactly those settings into my brush. You know, it's, it's obviously overkill, but now because that area is selected, we can go in, we can change the exposure of it if it's too much, we can make it more blue if it's not blue enough, we can make it less blue, like that actually looks pretty cool. We can bring the clarity up of the sky, we can bring the contrast down of the sky, or we can bring it up higher. 
so you can see we can really affect different areas of the photo. And if we ever want to get back to a previous masking brush, we just click on the target dot and now that area is selected. Or we come back over here and click on that target and that area is selected. So that's the masking brush. You can use it to completely brighten up a photo. As an example, this photo is a little bit dark. We can go over here to the brush, bring up the exposure, and then we can paint some new light into this entire photo. And now we can bring up that brightness. Another really cool thing is if you, if you select the circle here and let's zoom into a photo, we can draw an oval over this box, position it right here, change the brightness if we want. Let's make it really, really uh, yellow. Let's bring the contrast up on it, bring the blacks down, that kind of thing. And then we can right click and hit duplicate and that's gonna duplicate the same thing. We can move it over to this window. And then as an example, when we hit done and we zoom out, that looks like the lights are on. Now that's a super exaggerated, horrible, horrible hack job of doing that. But I do do this all the time. Here's a picture from yesterday that I posted on Instagram. Here's the exact same photo. I used all the HSL sliders. I painted in new light. I used that oval as a means to turn all of these different lights on that otherwise didn't have lights on before, but it just adds so much more life to the photo. And it's that easy to do in Lightroom. Here's another photo, for example. It's on its side, so you're gonna hit Command in the left bracket and that's gonna straighten it out. Now there's also all of your tone curves are down here. So if you wanna make this more vintage, a classic look to do that is to lift the blacks. So, and then we're gonna drop those mid-tones back down and then we're gonna even out that line. And then we're gonna just adjust that slightly. Perfect, come down here to our hue saturation. We're gonna take those greens, make them a little less green bring up that saturation slightly, a little bit of luminance. We can come over here, lift the shadows slightly, add a little bit more contrast, a little bit more clarity. We can even make the feel of this shot a little more warm on the warm side. And there you go. Again, we can come down here, scroll down and hit enable profile corrections. You can see it brightens up those edges, selects the lens that I was using, which was the 70 to 200 2.8. How do we export it for Instagram so that it looks the best? Now you're noticing a trend on Instagram right now where all of the shots are big, fat, vertical pictures because you wanna take up as much real estate on Instagram as you can to drive the most engagement. So for instance, here's my account right here. That picture is a big, fat photo. So what's the best way to do that? Well, if you come into Lightroom and you click on this crop button, you'll see aspect original. You're going to click on that and go enter custom. And that size that you're seeing everyone post on Instagram, including myself, is five by four. So change that to five by four and hit OK. And you're going to see a new crop. So this little outline box right here is five by four. So now we have to choose where we want the photo. Let's say we want it right here. We're going to hit done. At this point, you're going to go over to file, export, Make sure everything's on the highest quality. Come down here, make sure that's at 100 because a lot of the time it's not. We're just gonna export this to the desktop. So hit export. Once that's finished, come over here, right click, hit share, airdrop. If you're on a Mac, my phone's gonna pop up. Boom, and you'll see now my phone is going to get this image and it's that easy. Now I have a super high quality version of this photo on my phone straight from Lightroom that I've used to edit. Perfect for Instagram. I'm ready to upload, no quality loss, lots of real estate. Oh, good to go. Now for some super fast tips and shortcuts to round this thing off. Check this out. When you're sliding any of the sliders on the right side, hold down Alt. Let's do highlights, for example. When you start sliding those, Everything that you're seeing on the screen right now is showing you what is overexposed. So if you bring that all the way down to when there's nothing on the screen and let go, that is where nothing in this photo is blown out. Same with exposure. You hold down Alt and you bring that up. That's all the stuff that's blown out. So that right there is a perfectly exposed photo. Next tip, hit F on your keyboard. Boom, that's gonna give you a full size screen preview of whatever it is that you're looking at. You hit F again and you're brought back to this menu, which is, Amazing. Next tip, hit Y. Y is gonna show you a side-by-side -side comparison of before and after. If you wanna take that to the next level, hit Shift Y. That's gonna give you a split before and after of the same photo. If you wanna get out of that, just hit Y. We're back. So that's it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Happy Father's Day, and as a special gift to all the dads out there who are 
wanting to check out some presets for your videos or your photos, my LUTs pack today is 40% off. So link is in the description, head down there, click on it, the sale's done, you just gotta add to cart. So 40% off, thank you so much for your support. I hope you guys have a great day. Hit that like button if you like this video, subscribe if you aren't already. And I forgot to say, you are free to smash that like button should you so desire. I am headed out of the country tomorrow. I'm not headed out of the, no, I'm headed to the other side of the country tomorrow, so it's gonna be good. I hope to have lots of vlogs to you this week and a couple random tutorials that I'm not even sure if they'll work out, but I'm planning to try. So stay tuned to the channel, lots of fun stuff coming. I love each and every one of you. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Now go edit some photos and I got nothing. I'll see you guys in the next video.